Will the House come to order and members kindly take their seats? Happy Friday. In lieu of a devotional, will you please join me in a moment of silence? Members, we have one Senate bill for referral today. Senate Bill 96 is an act relating to privatization contracts introduced by Senator Vyhovsky and others. Please listen to the first reading of the bill. S96, an act relating to privatization contracts. Now the bill has been read the first time and is referred to the Committee on Government Operations and Military Affairs. Members, we've received requests to read several House concurrent resolutions that the House and Senate adopted pursuant to the consent calendar. The first is HCR 188, which is a House concurrent resolution congratulating Milton High School junior Olivia Thomas on her individual track and field achievements. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Whereas the attention-grabbing team results at state track and field championships are based on the performances of individual athletes who have worked through the indoor or outdoor season to maximize their athletic skills for these decisive competitions, and whereas Olivia Thomas, a junior at Milton High School, is a stellar example of a young athlete whose devotion to her selected events, the girls' long jump and the 100-meter dash, has resulted in top scores. And whereas, beginning in the spring of 2022, at the State Outdoor Track and Field Championships, Olivia Thomas led the Division II female competitors in each of her individual sports, completing the 100-meter dash in 12.9 seconds and traversing 15 feet 7.5 inches in the long jump. And whereas in 2023, Olivia Thomas proved that her skills transferred easily to indoor competition, when she topped her competitors with a speed of 7.7 .7 seconds in the 100 meter dash and traveled a respectable 14 feet 8.75 inches in the long jump. And then at that, outdoor, that year's outdoor meet, she demonstrated her continued continued command in the 100 meter dash, surpassing her prior outdoor time with a time of 12.83 seconds and increasing her long jump distance to 16 feet 7.75 inches. And whereas at the 2024 indoor competition at which the 100 meter dash was not conducted for three, for the division two, girl, three, two girls, her long jump result measured a satisfying 16 feet five inches and there remain three more state championships before she graduates, at which Olivia Thomas can continue to display her athletic excellence. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly congratulates Milton High School junior Olivia Thomas on her individual track and field achievements, and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be directed to send a copy of this resolution to Olivia Thomas. Next is HCR 195, which is a House concurrent resolution recognizing April 5th, 2024 is Civilian Conservation Corps Day in Vermont. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Whereas at the height of the Great Depression, the nation was experiencing an unprecedented economic crisis, resulting in massive unemployment and a major decrease in public works activity. And millions of young men were idle, lacking constructive activity in which to engage and insufficient, if any, financial resources to support themselves. And whereas on April 5th, 1933, President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued Executive Order 6101, formally organizing the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, and imp implementing the recently enacted Emergency Conservation Work Act 48 statu Statute 22 in 1933. And whereas from 1933 to 1942, approximately 3,463,000 men, mostly 18 to 25 years of age, resided at CCC camps and worked on public works projects with long-term societal benefits. And whereas across the country in national and state parks and on other public recreation lands, the CCC constructed over 3,000 fire towers, 46,854 bridges, 
125,000 miles of roads and 13,100 miles of foot trails. And whereas 3 billion trees were planted, 40 million acres of farmland were improved, and four, 972 million fish were stocked at the, in the nation's waters. And whereas beyond these construction in, initiatives, 110,000 members of the CCC who were illiterate gained basic reading and writing skills. And whereas Vermont was slated to host four CCC camps, but the passionate lobbying of legendary state forester Perry H. Merrill raised that number to more than 30, and camps were organized in communities throughout Vermont, leaving an amazing legacy. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly recognizes April 5th, 2024, as Civilian Conservation Corps Day in Vermont, and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be directed to send a copy of this resolution to National Civilian Conservation Day Coordinator, Mary Podsk. And finally, HCR 200 is a House concurrent resolution commemorating Vermont's historic April 8, 2024 total solar eclipse. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Whereas a syzygy is an alignment of three celestial bodies in a gravitational system, and this cosmic phenomenon often, often results in a total solar or lunar eclipse. And whereas eclipses occur around the world with a degree of regularity, but the visibility of total solar eclipse in Vermont is a rare event, the sky having last offered this astro astronomical extravaganza nearly a century ago in 1932. And whereas on April 8, 2024, residents of and visitors to much of the northern half of the state will be offered the unusual chance to witness a total solar eclipse with great viewing in a corridor extending from Burlington to St. Albans on the western portion of the state to Newport and St. Johnsbury in the Northeast Kingdom. And whereas in Burlington, the total solar, the solar eclipse will commence at 2.14 p.m. and reach its totality between 3.26 and 3.29 p.m. And whereas if the skies are clear, the effect will be to the reduce the city's light level to dusk conditions. And if the sky is cloudy, the eclipse will create middle of the night illumination conditions. And whereas the Vermont Space Grant Consortium and the University of Vermont are partnering with other academic institutions to provide a safe and exciting eclipse experience for the state's college students, faculty and staff, and the Fairbanks Museum and the Planetarium is educating Vermonters in advance of the eclipse, including on the importance of wearing special glasses if viewing the event directly. Whereas eclipse gatherings are being held throughout the viewing zone and Vermonters would be wise to take advantage of this special occasion as the next total eclipse visible in Vermont is projected to occur in 2079. Now, therefore be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly commemorates Vermont's historic April 8, 2024 total solar eclipse, and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be directed to send a copy of this resolution to the Vermont Space Grant Consortium and to the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium. Are there any announcements, Member from Milton? Uh, Madam Speaker, we just heard a resolution honoring Olivia Thomas. Uh, Olivia is a junior at Milton High School who has dominated the 55 meter dash and long jump in indoor track and the 100 meter dash long in long jump and spring track and field, placing first seven times so far uh, in the Division II state championships. She is a talented athlete who is committed to her sport and earned herself an invitation two years in a row to both the New England indoor and outdoor track and field championships. As a junior, this is an incredible feat, and everyone in Milton is incredibly excited to see her continue to break her own school records as well as reach for the state records too. It is sometimes difficult as an individual athlete performing also on a team. You may shine individually, but collectively you may not win the team championship. So we wanted to give this additional recognition to Olivia. This girl's got wheels. Um, with her today uh, up in the balcony uh, is her dad, Boris, her mom, Tracy, her friends, good friends, Isabella Tomasi, and she's also a teammate of hers, uh, Charlotte Lemery, a friend, and then two people that uh, Olivia wouldn't be here if it weren't for them are Brenda Snow and Dave Snow, her grandparents from Bennington, mm -hmm. and also Marcel Choquette, the athletic director from Milton High School. Um, 
Madam Speaker, on behalf of the uh, Milton and Bennington delegations, because of the snows being here, I would ask that you please give a warm welcome to our guests, to Olivia and her friends that are seated up in the balcony. Will the guests of the member from Milton please rise and be recognized? Are there any further announcements? Member from Barnett. Madam Speaker, we have a very special guest here in the People's House today. For 42 years, this gentleman has been providing the most accurate and reliable weather forecasts that you may hear on the radio. And for 35 years, he's been the director of the first and only public planetarium in the state of Vermont. And he's got his eye in the sky looking down at us from the gallery right now. I would love to welcome the inimitable friend and colleague of mine, Mark Breen. Will the guest member from Barnett please rise and be recognized. <laughs> Are there any further announcements? Seeing, oh, member from Newport City. Madam Speaker, due to yesterday's spring storm, the member from Chittenden could not be present today to share a special message to this body. I was contacted by the member and was informed that due to my exuberant speaking abilities, <laughs> that, that the member chose me specifically to deliver his message. How could I possibly refuse the member's request? <laughs> Madam Speaker, may I deliver that message? You may. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would also ask that the body please keep in mind that the message in its entirety is from the member from Chittenden. <laughs> And the following are his words that he has scripted, especially for me, to give to you today. And that message begins now. It seems the member from Chittenden is still shoveling out from the storm and asked me to remind all members of the House that the once in a lifetime opportunity to view a total eclipse is Monday afternoon here at the State House. Madam Speaker, this is a really big deal. And believe me, I know what big deals are. While the eclipse begins at 2.14 here with, total with totality at 3.28, we ask that you plan to be here by one o'clock or earlier. You are welcome to bring family members with you. Just let Molly in the speaker's office know so we can plan accordingly. Please use the gated parking areas on either side of the building, which you can access with your electronic pass. Attendees may wish to bring snacks or cookies to share. Protective eyewear will be available as well as drinks. And finally, Madam Speaker, the member from Chittenden wanted me to remind everyone that this weekend there are some important games in both the men's and the women's basketball tournaments. And I, for one, will be rooting for Purdue in the men's, as they just may be my chance for fame and fortune. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Are there any further announcements, member from Pulteney? Madam Speaker, <clears throat> I stand before this body with probably one of the most important and profound messages that I have been asked to deliver. The member from Chittenden could not be present this morning, and it has fallen upon me to deliver the latest basketball updates. Our UVM women's team made a valiant effort in the 2024 Women's National Invitational Tournament, known as the NITs. They cruised to the Super 16, upset Purdue in the Great Eight, to make it to the final four. Unfortunately, they succumbed to St. Louis with a squeaker, 57-54. Our congratulations go out to the UVM women's team for their great run to the championship. 
As far as the NCAA men's tournament, the final four teams will play April 6th, so stay tuned. Relative to the NCAA women's tournament, the final four teams will play tonight. Now, what do the final four teams in both the men's and women's brackets have in common with Vermont? Funny you should ask. Well, in both the men's and women's brackets, there remains a team that hails from Connecticut. The University of Connecticut men's and women's teams made it to the final four, and here's where it gets interesting. Ethan Allen and Ira Allen were born in Connecticut. I am, I am an alumna of the University of Connecticut. I also represent the town of Poultney, where Ethan Allen would regularly drink at the bar of the historic Eagle Tavern in Poultney. I also represent the town of Ira, Vermont, named after Ira Allen. Surely no one can fault me for thinking this is a sign that the University of Connecticut has a chance to make it to the finals in both the men's and women's tournaments. Now all that has to happen is a total eclipse of the sun and, and my dream may come true. Are there any further announcements? Member from Williston. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, before we gavel back in on Tuesday, there will be a historic event, people pouring into the state. We saw some of them yesterday. Uh, there might even be traffic in Cornwall because it will be a historic birthday this weekend for the member from Cornwall. <laughs> Happy birthday, member. <laughs>